Hi, my name is Janae Gerard, and I'm the author of Off the Rack, and I'm the creator of Beyond the Baby Trap, and I'm here with Dr. Vanessa Fritz. Hi. And she's a naturopathic doctor, and she is with Austin Natural Family Medicine. That is correct. In Austin, Texas. So welcome, Dr. Fritz. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Can you explain the difference between homeopathic medicine and natural medicine? Absolutely. Those are two terms that a lot of people use interchangeably, and, and they're really they're similar, but they're not quite the same thing. And so natural medicine is a really is sort of the broadest term where we're talking about ways to help ourselves using modalities that aren't pharmaceutical. So using things like nutrition, uh, lifestyle counseling, uh, herbal medicine, be it Western herbs or Chinese medicine herbs. Uh, homeopathy is a subset of natural medicine where we're using uh, substances that have been highly diluted um, in order to get basically the energetic resonance of that substance and use that for healing purposes. Sounds a little bit crazy, but it, 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 it actually works really, really well. And so homeopathy is one modality that's included within the grander topic of natural medicine, or what I do as a naturopathic doctor, or naturopathic medicine. So I, I can use many different modalities. People that are straight on homeopaths basically are only using the homeopathic modality, or only using specific um, energetic medicines. Um, they're called homeopathic remedies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so here's my subset group, okay, and most of them have gone through all of their treatment. They've gone through either radiation, chemotherapy, surgery, or a combination of all of them. So we're just so depleted, many times depressed, you know, we don't sleep, we're, we're just really... <laughs> Probably at the, the edge of our uh, edge of our rope, you Absolutely. know, it's just it's really hardcore. So, um, what are some things to help us move beyond this treatment and help us look beyond that we might not have thought about, you know, or a traditional uh, medical practice might not have thought about addressing and as far as us moving forward, health and health wise. Definitely, because you know when you're going undergoing all the treatments that you're doing, everybody seems to have their specialty, and they treat your, you know, this part of you or this part of you, and they don't really treat the whole person, and they don't really do a lot of things. Well, once you're out of my office, you're out of my office, and that's that. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a great time to start exploring different things that you can do on your own. Uh, like I said, as a naturopath, one of the big things we talk about is lifestyle. And lifestyle is huge to get you back on, you know, to a, a, a place of closer to normalcy. Mm -hmm. um, and the big thing that you've just been under when you go through all those treatments is you've been under a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. And we all know that stress basically puts your immune system to sleep. The kind of chemicals and, and uh, cytokines and, and inflammation, all that that's released during a period of stress literally puts your immune system to sleep. It, it activates the cells that, and, and the chemical messengers that are part of your immune system. And so one big way to help you get back on track is to support your adrenal glands. The adrenal glands basically put out hormones that, you know, back when we were evolving as a human race and you needed to fight away, uh, run away from that saber-toothed tiger, put out a ton of adrenaline, put out a ton of cortisol to help you with that stress or that flight or flight mechanism. Modern days, we're not running away from the saber-toothed tiger, so to speak, but we're having daily sources of, of stress, and that's chronic stress, and we didn't evolve that way. And so adrenal glands still put out all these hormones, and then after a while, um, you know, it just can't put them out anymore. Now, I'm not talking about extreme places and pathological cases where either you have too much cortis cortisol or you don't have any at all. Mm -hmm. You know, those, are me those could be medical emergencies. I'm not talking about those pathological extremes, I'm talking more at a functional level. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can do testing to see where you're at in that sort of stage. If you're at the very beginning where you know your levels are through the roof or towards mm -hmm. the end where your adrenal glands are kind of petering out, so to speak. Uh, but supporting the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are uh, glands that live on top of your kidneys and um, they help with basically your, the rest of the endocrine system. You know, with breast cancer, uh, survivors, you're talking mainly about estrogen, and you know, estrogen may be progesterone here and there, those are the two hormones you hear about. But really, our endocrine system is this very complex, interconnected web of all these other hormones. And so, by supporting the adrenal glands, you can actually help support things like your thyroid, which you know may or may not be off mm -hmm. after the treatments. Or, it, you know, again, 
Um, if you still have your ovaries, it might help with the estrogen and progesterone production. So really, all they feed into one another. Mm -hmm. um, the most important thing for regulating the adrenal glands is getting back on routine. So people think, oh, I need to take X, Y, or Z supplement. Well, supplements can be very helpful, but the things that you do for yourself um, on your own are much more powerful than any you know pills, natural or pharmaceutical that you can be taking. And so routine is crucial. Uh, getting up at the same time every day, going to bed at the same time every day. The human body has normal biorhythms that we really need to stay as close to as possible. Again, back when we were cavemen, you know, the sun kind of dictated that. Right, <laughs> when right. the sun went down, you went to bed, mm -hmm. and when the sun went up, you 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 got. And we don't need we we don't always uh, adhere to that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, normal human circadian rhythm is to go to bed between 10 p.m. and then wake up at 6 a.m. Hmm. Uh, there's an old saying that every hour of sleep before midnight is worth two afterwards. And it seems like you just get much better quality of sleep if you can go to bed earlier. Now, not everybody's going to follow that exact timing, but you right. know, as close to that as you can get really is ideal. Exercising at the same time every day. You know, we all hear that exercise is good, and at first you might be so depleted and feeling so tired you can't do that, but even starting with a walk around the block, you know, just something mm -hmm. to get you moving where you're just not sitting on the couch. And doing that morning is an excellent time to exercise, not because of the <laughs> cooler temperatures out in the morning, but um, also that's just when uh, the body is uh, most receptive hmm. to, to that kind of exercise, um, <clears throat> or to exercise in general. Um, so exercising at the same time every day, eating at the same time every day. There's people who just kind of graze and pick all day long, and you know your appetite might not be kind of what it should be after treatment. But to, even if you can just try to force yourself to eat, you know, at least three square meals a day. They don't have to be huge, but kind of time it the same way. And people who are you know trying to do too much and sometimes skip meals because they're so busy, you're really not helping your cause at all by doing that. That's interesting. I never thought about yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, and so, of course, I mean, you're not going to be a machine mm -hmm. and do the same exact thing, but being, you know, n just not being so scattered. Mm -hmm. um, people who work shift work and do night shifts and things like that, that really messes up with your circadian mm -hmm. rhythms. It really messes up your endocrine system. So if at all possible, you know, getting on day shifts, mm -hmm. if, if you can do that, I know a lot of people like to work night shifts because it's better money and then they can get other things done. And, well, you have to do what you have to do to get by, right? But if you can avoid shift work as much as possible, it would be much better um, for your body to recover. <music>